In this video, I'm going to help you prepare for the multi-factor authentication and single sign-on settings super badge unit. I'm going to do this by breaking down the content here into user stories and tasks. This video is a continuation of the first video in this playlist. If you have not seen that, please check it out and then come back here. And with that, let's get into this content. The use case for this section I wrote as you are going to implement security requirements for Cumulus Global Bank's new customer service operations. Taking something big, complicated, writing it in one sentence, it's a good thing to do. User stories and tasks I wrote as a admin. I want to create test users so that I can implement, test the implementation of SSO. By the way, I should say that you've already done you know before you got to this you already had to sign up for your special org and got that all set up okay so fine and all that i've done here is just take the content that comes up here and just try to break it down into a more simple way to follow but when i haven't rewritten it in any way because i don't want to give away the answers because it's a credential um but when you write this, you can write it in a way that's more instructive and easier to follow for yourself. You should do this. Okay, um, for the tasks, Murphy Jean, SSO testing, Brochan Payne, I think it's pronounced Brochan Payne. I, I looked actually into like Brochan and it seems like it's a Scottish word that means like oatmeal or something. And it, it sounds, yeah, anyhow, I wasn't sure if it was Brochan or Brocane or but it seemed, or, bro, or Brohan, you know, like if it was like more Arabic, but I think it's Brohan pain. But anyhow, um, I don't know, I'm like massively punchy. Okay, um, so Brohan pain, break glass and mystery testing. You're gonna generate their emails for both of these two people um, and set it to your email address and then create new passwords for later access. Um, also, you should use an incognito web browser when logging in. Um, Otherwise, you're going to get logged in twice and that's going to be confusing. And do not change the username set for these users because those usernames are like what the challenge is actually checking. So you don't want to mess up on that. That's the first part of um, challenge one. The second part I said is like this single sign on um, part one. And this is really I wrote as a company that we want to implement SSO for the company's new Salesforce org so that access is secure. And the things you're gonna do here are to make sure that users cannot log in to the org with their Salesforce credentials. And instead, you're gonna create a permission set called single sign-on with an API name of single sign-on for this requirement. And like this is, I should have like, you know, like quote, 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 quote. Um, Use Murphy Gene as the SSO test user. Be sure to set Federation ID for this user as you'll need it in later steps. So just keep a note around so you've got all that information in one place. And you can use whatever value you'd like for the Federation ID. Once you've done these two things, you are good to pass challenge one. Oh, I didn't give much of a disclaimer. You know, like, don't place too much stock in what I did here. I did write this, I did pass all of these based off of the instructions that I wrote. But like, when in doubt, if there's something I wrote here that I messed up, like, please, I'm, you know, don't rely over on this. You're really supposed to be looking at the challenge. My video is not the source of truth, right? This is your source of truth. Okay, so just, thanks. Number two, I wrote, for part two of single sign-on, I wrote, as a company, I wanna configure SSO, inbound SSO, so that access is secure. And you know, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna use the Axiom Heroku app. You're gonna, um, Axiom provide you with the following security markup language settings. And then, you know, I, I didn't include it all over here, but these are the settings that you're gonna use, okay? And once you do that, um, you are then able to move on to the next part. And that is to test configurations for an admin and make sure that's secure. And you're gonna actually have to generate the SAML response. A successful test allows you to log in as Murphy Gene. The Axiom SAML version must match the versions in your SAML SSO settings. So that's gotta hopefully make sense to you. And then set the recipient URL to the login URL endpoint. So 
make sure that those are all configured correctly. And once you've done those things, you're ready to move on to the next part of the single sign-on, which is also um, to now, as an admin, we want to force SSO login so that access is secure. I could say, as a user, I want to be forced to do SSO login, even though you can't imagine any user actually wanting that, but the reason they would want that is so they don't cause a security breach and so that they're accessing it in the most secure way possible. So that's the, you know, way of, of framing this user story. You could do it either way. Tasks here is to make sure that users are unable to bypass SSO requirements by preventing direct login from login.salesforce.com. You're gonna add a button to the org's My Domain login page that takes users direct, directly to the Axiom SSO test authentication service. And then note, we won't check the SSO button, but adding is best practice. And yeah, my brain was just like, wait, I don't think I did that. Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> so they don't check it. But I didn't actually do it. Um, anyhow, don't get yourself locked out. Make note of the domain's my domain URL um, and do not uncheck login form authentication service. Once you've done all of those things, you're ready to pass the second challenge. Challenge three is about multi-factor authentication. Here as an admin, you want to maintain access to the organ event of an outage with the SSO IDP. And so the tasks are to be able to log in from the mind domains URL. You're going to use the Brohan pane user in your special org to test the configurations. The break glass user is required to pass a MFA verification challenge. So you actually have to do that. And then the user permission set labeled MFA authorization for break glass admin with API of this. And once you've so get that all set up, then you are ready to pass challenge three. Challenge four is still about multi-factor authentication. And here we're gonna be enabling lightning login. And this is just an extra layer of security and to streamline break glass admin login procedure. This was actually pretty cool. You're gonna make sure that you enable lightning login, make sure that only users with the permission set lab labeled Lightning login user, quote, quote, and with that API name, can log in with this method. And you're going to log in as Brohan Payne to connect the Salesforce Authenticator app and roll a Lightning login and test the configurations you made above. You actually have to do the Lightning login thing, though. So just, you know, keep that in mind. You can't just like set it up. You actually have to do it because that's what it tests. So you actually have to, yeah. I found this article helpful, the Enroll on Lightning Login, um, and that's linked in the description below. Um, another thing that came up, a thing I forgot to mention, was that require users to log in with SSO. found that one helpful, also linked in the description. Once you've completed all these tasks, passed the challenges, you are now done with this unit and ready to move on. I will see you in the next video.